Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Erin Kokinda. I am the new, well, I guess you could still say new, Community and Economic Development Director for the Town of Wakefield. Uh, we're thrilled to have all of you here today as we host the Urban Land Institute um, for a study that they've done for us the last three days for South Main Street. I just wanted to thank them um, personally for all their time. We did a, a, a site tour on uh, Friday. They had a number of meetings with some stakeholders in the community yesterday, and then since then they've been working together to put together this report for us on um, how we look at that area moving forward for development. So thank you everyone uh, that's here. I'm going to hand it off to um, our town administrator, Steve Mayo, who's on the call as well. So Steve, pass to you. Thank you. Thank you, Erin. And um, I, I don't think it's the time you've spent with us, it's the mileage. So there's been <laughs> a lot of mileage there, even though you're fairly new in time. So thank you for all your good work. I want to thank the Urban Land, Instant, Land Institute and all of our stakeholders for actually coming in and meeting with them and the citizens that are watching this either on uh, Facebook or we'll see a video of it later on. Um, this area of town, um, South Main Street, South Square, whatever you want to call it, uh, is an area that was very, um, very important and nostalgic for me. I can remember 30 years ago going out to dinner at Molise, as a lot of you have in town, I'm sure, with your family and friends. And years ago, it was the place in town where people went. I know that's hard to believe now, but that was the place where people went. So it'd be nice to see some plan to bring it back. Um, we had spoken with the Urban Land Institute, um, oh my goodness, the end of 2019, beginning of 2020. So we had hoped to have a traditional uh, walk around uh, charrette uh, program in April of 2020. Of course, uh, things changed. So I want to thank the Urban Land Institute for pivoting um, in this time and able to bring this, uh, you know, to Wakefield and to their other constituencies that they do. Um, certainly is a great uh, program. And I certainly look forward to uh, hearing what they have to say today. And hopefully that'll help us um, move the town even more forward. A lot of exciting things going on. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Ed O'Rourke and John Martin, the co-chairs here, who have done great work and have them start. Uh, telling us what we need to do. So thank you, gentlemen. Right. Well, thank you everyone uh, for, for coming. I, I, we, we found uh, from our, uh, our tour of the uh, South Main Street that there's a lot of passion uh, in the town to, to have a beautiful uh, community. And, uh, you know, we hope that we could help with uh, um, some, providing some good ideas for uh, South Main Street. Um, your, the Urban Land Institute is an all-volunteer uh, 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 group, and the, the mission is to provide leadership in, in uh, responsible use of land and creating and sustaining thriving communities worldwide. We're, we're 36,000 members strong, and we come from a diverse background of developers, uh, public officials, and um, members of the AEC community, that's architects, engineers, uh, contractors of all types, and that our, our panel today is made up of of those type folks that come again as volunteers to uh, help solve problems in towns like Wakefield and many others in the in in New England. Um, we're we're members of what's known as a technical assistance panel or TAP. We uh, um, ULI Bo uh, Boston New England has uh, been providing TAPs for many years now. And um, we had recently uh, looked at uh, the results of our TAPs in the last 10 years by surveying, surveying communities like Wakefield, similar to Wakefield, to find out that 82% said that their behavior and approach to municipal planning and economic development was, was uh, affected by uh, the TAP analysis and what we provided. 67% said they were they were in, they, there was increased municipal investments related to the stated goals and recommendations in the TAP that was provided. And 62% said at least one of the key developable, uh, developable assets um, addressed in the TAP uh, had been um, uh, uh, in, invested in and, and, uh, and changed uh, positively. So uh, in the TAP, we're going to, we're going to, summarize our findings uh, uh, that we developed in a charrette today. Uh, and then in about 12 weeks, we're gonna develop a report and submit it to the town, which will be available to you all. 
And today's sponsor uh, is the town of Wakefield, and we're very thankful and uh, uh, encouraged that uh, Wakefield uh, wants to have a, a, a better South Main Street. And so uh, our, our TAP panel is, uh, my name's Ed O'Rourke again, and uh, I'm with a company called Environmental Health and Engineering. And um, I'm gonna introduce uh, each of the panelists and they'll, they'll tell you a little bit about themselves. First, uh, my co-chair is John Martin. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. I'm a principal at Elkis Manfredi Architects in Boston. And uh, I work a lot in suburban communities around Boston doing mixed use projects, uh, not unlike anticipated here. And next is uh, uh, one of our panelists is Jeff Birnbaum. I'll let him say a little bit about uh, himself. Uh, thank you very much, and thank you, everyone, uh, this evening for the opportunity to be involved with the TAP program. I'm a vice president at CHA, which is a consulting group, and the group that I run are uh, owner project managers representing various owners in the private sector. Uh, and I'm also involved in this program by way of University of Miami through the Masters of Real Estate Development and Urbanism program. Next is uh, Tanya Mitchell. Tanya. Good evening, everyone. Hi, I'm Tanya Mitchell. Um, as you can see, I am a member of uh, ULI's Technical Assistant Panel, and I sit on a number of uh, additional committees. Um, I have a number of years of experience uh, within uh, state diversity, inclusion, and compliance um, construction, contract monitoring, and um, real estate development selections, and um, a, a great deal of experience with certifications of small and diverse businesses. Right. And uh, Diana? Hi, I'm Diana Pichota. I'm the president of Dentraline. It's a communications firm that does a lot of community relations and community engagement around real estate development projects and placemaking. Uh, great, thanks. And uh, next is Melvin Vieira. How are you doing? Thank you very much, Ed. My name is Melvin Vieira. I am the president elect of the Greater Boston Real Estate Association. Um, and also the vice, also the chair of the Dublin Affairs Committee for the Massachusetts Association of Realtors as well. And also I'm on the board of directors of the Greater Boston Real Estate Board. And with the Massachusetts Association of Realtors, I help uh, make up the public policies and decisions in regards to what affects you so that you can possibly go ahead and continue to buy and sell and also do what you need to do and within the community of Massachusetts as well as Wakefield. Thank you. Yeah, and our last panel member is uh, Corey Zengabat. Corey. Thank you. Uh, Corey Zengabat, I work for Graffito. We're a retail placemaking advisory firm that also does brokerage and leasing uh, throughout the greater Boston area. I'm also a licensed architect and planner. So we're all the volunteers. However, we couldn't get this done without the uh, dedication of the ULI staff. And uh, we're joined uh, tonight uh, by Michelle Landers, uh, Sarah Marsh, and uh, John Wilson. And we have a writer who's going to uh, present uh, present that report in about twelve weeks. His name's Michael Hoven, so he's been in the background and taking uh, copious notes. And I hope we ha we can provide some good findings. So, so that we're, we we had three questions that were provided to us by the town, and I'll I'll uh, I'll, I'll state those. This is the subject area for those who are not familiar with what we were looking at. It's really that, that uh, what we consider the, the, the Southern Gateway to Main Street, which comprises the, um, that section between um, Richardson and, um, I, I forget the, net, the wow. next Main Street, along Main Street, uh, across from the Civic Center. And so the, the, the the short, long, and uh, uh, term goals are, uh, the short term is that uh, we're, we're looking at state uh, vacant storefronts. So what model bylaws could the town propose to uh, address empty storefront windows and require better stewardship of the buildings? Uh, the long-term question is, um, are the, the sites are underutilized. So should the town seek iconic um, uh, uh, buildings? Uh, what are the best uh, uses given the national decline in walk-in retail businesses? And what would be appropriate, what would be the appropriate scale of new buildings given the location of these parcels? 
uh, what model bylaws would the ULI team recommend to address parking for the uses proposed? And lastly, what's the marketability? How to attract good developers to sites that require investment and vision strategies for working with existing property owners to support uh, efforts to identify buyers who will create uh, a return on investment for the original owner and invest in the appropriate redevelopment. With that, uh, so I'm, I'm going to turn this over now to uh, Melvin Vieira to go over some to to go over some of the challenges that we have here with uh, with our sites. Thank you very much, Ed. Appreciate I'm it. Sorry, the assets and opportunities. Yeah, thank you very much. So um, thank you all uh, for coming and listening. The Asset Opportunities of South Main Street is the Southern Gateway to downtown. New middle school, 1,000 one plus students, playing fields and activities um, for the afternoons and weekends. The other asset is a civic center um, active for multiple users. Within a five to 10 minute walk also from there to the commuter stop and growing number of nearby higher density residential projects. For the infrastructure and recreation upgrade in planning st stages, new rail trail anticipated behind the subject area, creating excitement and great opportunities for retail and living. Planned roadway and sidewalk improvements. Existing zone creates some flexibility and opportunity. Mixed use zoning overlay district, and it's about a 1600 linear feet frontage. The retail environment has potential. Several strong retail anchors, significant surface parking available during off peak hours is there. But those are some of the great opportunities that we can do. Next. So if you take a look here at the asset opportunities, if you look in the red line that's highlighted, you can see that that's the subject area that you've asked us to look at. And if you also look at the overlay that's also over there, which has the new streetscape that's planned from the Envision plan, from we understand is that this is what they're gonna be doing and making it really nice. We've come up with some other ideas in regards to putting side uh, crosswalks near the school. Um, that's a great opportunity for there for the kids can cross back and forth from those little areas because the crosswalks that they have now are showing they're a little bit too far for the kids that we feel to walk. We also feel the nice streetscape will be also beautiful if you look at the trees and way the access, and this is the streetscape here. So anyway, that's just some of the assets and opportunities that you do have, especially this being the Southern, we saw call the Southern gateway of your community. We think you can definitely really do some great things. Thank you very much. So with opportunities, uh, there come some challenges in uh, delivering uh, improvement uh, in this particular corridor. I'm gonna review some of those challenges now. There are, through the corridor or pond uh, coming to the Southern Gateway of Main Street, uh, it, there are many unwelcoming elements currently. There are vacant storefronts. There's unknown conditions within those actual um, sites right now, but we believe that there, a component of them may be in disrepair. We do know that there are exterior upgrades uh, that uh, would be needed. Um, we understand there's a long-term ownership with uh, limited in incentive to reinvest in the asset. And we'll talk about that a little later. Uh, we believe there are some non-conforming uses and we are aware there's some environmental remediation that may be required for development of the sites, which essentially for the landowners equals uh, a lot of extra money and not a lot of return on investment other than the site would be cleaned up. Existing public conditions are challenging, even though a component of these will be addressed in the Envision Wakefield uh, project, it's currently narrow sidewalks. There is no tree canopy or shade coverage. There's a lackluster public realm. And when you look across the street, to put in a little perspective, you have the Civic Center and CVS, and they're both set back from the property lines, which is a less engaging component uh, at the pedestrian level. We also viewed from our walkthrough uh, a lack of pedestrian connectivity. There's a lack of crosswalks, as uh, Melvin had mentioned, particularly near the Civic Center parking lot and the middle school. Uh, safety is of the utmost concern where you have 1,070 students uh, get dropped off and uh, picked up at the end of the day 
uh, and they want to go about out and about near town. Um, we felt that Main Street and West Water Street is not currently an inviting intersection to cross from North to Main Street. Next slide, please. We feel that there's a limited activation on South Main Street. Uh, we're not really aware of any programming that's outdoor, temporary pop-ups. We'll speak about that later. And there's no existing arts or culture or music or theater uh, venue. Speaking of retail and for potential future tenants, there's no doubt that the current retail environment uh, has been greatly affected by the global pandemic and there's a shift uh, in retail overall and retail leakage. Um, and even if the area uh, were to be uh, redeveloped, uh, there, uh, the, in, the better um, spaces would uh, call for more increased uh, rents and pot potentially could be unaffordable. And lastly, planning and zoning. Uh, we believe there may be a perceived lack of parking. Uh, we believe that there are challenges, as I cur currently mentioned, with the pickup and drop-off periods, which brings up uh, safety. Um, and we'll speak about it a little later, but maybe special permits for increased density, uh, but maybe not possibly not, not enough. So moving to recommendations. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm going to jump in here on recommendations and I'm going to share this um, effort with Corey. So we, you know, I want to thank you again for all the stakeholders who took the time to speak with us because we really did take in consideration your concerns and all the varying viewpoints. And one of the things that we, we decided to do is really take the recommendations and break them down between like short term, medium term and long Long term, because in order to achieve um, any particular goals, you really need to start these conversations now and just um, devise up a plan. Now, one of the things that in the short term, we really encourage, um, you know, because there are so many different stakeholders, um, you know, really encouraging the investment in these key parcels. We know that everyone has varying goals and concerns and um, are, some are very vocal in what it is, but it's really kind of centralizing and having clear lines of communication um, with each other to um, really determine what needs to be done. Um, so that's one thing. And as well as centralizing the economic development process, we, you know, we definitely heard that there are some other plans, you know, uh, down the road for, um, you know, uh, down um, further down Main Street, as well as they are having conversations with uh, the rail trail. So really just getting everybody on the same page and devising up a plan um, and really taking a hold of those assets that you have in that town because you really do have some great assets as well as um, really looking at some of the challenging situations with uh, the property there. Um, additionally, when we're looking, we're looking at the market in South Main Street corridor, uh, we, we heard, you know, there were concerns about parking and we heard concerns of, um, you know, Definitely, we've heard, like, as I mentioned, in the challenges of like retail leakage. So, again, it's really about taking that time and reinvesting back into the community and coming together. Um, we have some other suggestions that we will cover later on of, you know, as business owners um, investing back into the property. But, you know, some things that are some concerns of like walking distance there, but we did find that there is a significant amount of parking on off hours, but just really putting signage and wayfinding of like the distance between one point A to another. Um, and then we really encourage creating like a merchant association, um, whether to, you know, there are conversations about, um, you know, makers markets or just other um, initiatives that uh, the constituents or, you know, the stakeholders and the business owners would like to do in the community. So coming together to be able to do that is um, really, really, really important. And one of the other things is uh, probably just creating a, like a survey and the survey as it relates to um, business owners and survey as it relates to uh the individuals who live within the area to really find out what each individuals are looking for. 
And I'm going to pass this part over to Corey. Thanks, Tanya. I'm going to talk about um, planning and placemaking. So there's been a lot of good planning work that has been done. Um, We applaud the embracing of the mixed use overlay district, um, but we think perhaps it should go further to be able to support um, development. Right now, I think those parameters might preclude um, development that will pencil out. So we think that's worth a relook given that we're coming up on, I think, uh, a 10 year mark. Um, But regards to placemaking, we think this is actually the greatest opportunity in the short term. So a principle in terms of placemaking, both now and going forward, is that what is unique about these sites is that it's dual frontage. It has a frontage on Main Street, um, like many of the other uh, businesses that, that we walked by, but it also has a secondary frontage on the future rail trail. And we know um, the timeline for that is a bit unclear, but we think it's really important to um, preview that as a coming attraction through any temporary activation that we might do in the near term, but also to tee up uh, future development scenarios in the medium and the long term. So that's a critical, critical point um, that we we hope to will bear fruit in um, in, in this coming year. Um, so our strategy in terms of short-term recommendations for placemaking is, you know, there's been a lot of emphasis on the vacant buildings, but we think we should sort of shift our priorities to the surface parking and the, the vacant site, the balance of the sites, which could be used for outdoor amenities. Um, right now, you know, it's already very difficult to go inside buildings because of the pandemic, and though we can be optimistic, Um, about the future, I think looking ahead towards the summertime, there's a lot of pent up demand to get outdoors. And one of the things we've learned um, walking around Main Street is that there's really not a whole lot of dedicated outdoor space um, for the food and and beverage uh, businesses that are located there. And, you know, just speaking anecdotally, uh, in the greater Boston area, prior to the pandemic, that was Um, one of the top things that uh, restaurants and other proprietors were seeking. So we think this is a tremendous opportunity to be able to establish um, a development that has a combination of obviously built interior space with an outdoor amenity space. Um, But in the short term, there's a standard place playbook, sorry, for placemaking um, that we think we should lean into hard. Things like food trucks, um, outdoor seating. And when we say outdoor seating, Um, We mean just, you know, movable tables and chairs that uh, people who um, are grabbing lunch uh, during a weekday or even on the weekends because they're playing at the soccer fields might use to sit outside and enjoy the hopefully warmer weather, not today. Um, Things like pop-up food and beverage, food trucks, um, and public art. And we know there is an existing uh, farmer's market that takes place a little bit further afield, but we think this might also be a good location um, for bringing some activity Uh, to this part of Main Street. Um, I already mentioned the rail trail. You know, I know there is already on the table some proposed development um, for, I believe, a bank branch. And, you know, we just want to emphasize that any development that that happens here, even in the near term, um, be mindful of the fact that there is going to be, uh, I would say, accentuated use by both pedestrians and cyclists and make sure that the development is sort of sensitive to that interface. Um, The other thing that we might recommend is even as the uh, plan that we were previewing earlier um, as part of the uh, subject area uh, includes crosswalks, we think it might be worth um, doing some temporary crosswalks. This is, again, um, sort of a standard playbook that different municipalities use to um, implement temporary crossings. You can do that in combination with sort of rapid flash beacons to alert folks to the the presence of pedestrians crossing. Um, And that is a way to sort of test and verify uh, the locations that are part of the VHB plan. And we think as as Melvin mentioned, there is maybe the potential um, for additional crossings as well. And then the last point is that, um, you know, in the absence of a, a specific use for these buildings in the near term, we want to think of the storefront windows as an empty canvas, something that could be used Um, for doing some kind of art project, either through a public art program or even something that the Boys and Girls Club across the street could do as a maybe welcome spring activity. Next slide. So those were the short term, medium term. um, Oh, sorry, this is just um, 
a, a, a flavor, a visual flavor slide to give you a sense of some placemaking strategies. Again, low cost, easy to implement, something that can be done relatively quickly within the year and predominantly outside um, through simple paint and movable seating, food trucks and the like. Next slide. So um, I think Tanya, you're gonna talk to the first bullet and I will talk to the second. I think she got kicked off and is okay. Well, back I will. On. I will just talk about them. So um, I'm, I'm actually. I just got back in. I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> I literally got kicked out. Sorry, everyone. Um, so I'm sorry, Miss Corey's uh, part, which was I know was absolutely great, but I'll talk to like the medium piece of um, recommendations. So as for um, one of the things that we are recommending for a medium, which will be like one to three years lookout is really streamlining the regulatory process for developments and review current planning efforts. And it's really having the conversation with the town and looking at zoning, um, looking at, you know, building codes. And I think it's really a matter of creating synergy within the businesses. You know, uh, looking at the beautification, there are businesses that offer those services. There's, you know, you have a business within um, the town that deals with awning. So it's just a matter of making that particular error more inviting. Um, additionally, really exploring staffing capacity when you're looking at the town. Um, my understanding is that uh, there isn't a current city planner. So putting that person in place to really work with the business owners and um, devising a plan of how to move forward from the, you know, the one year mark to the three years, all the way to 10 years of what um, this particular area could be. And um, really establishing community program. We, you know, when we listened um, to the constituents, when we listened to um, all the stakeholders, as well as just walk the area, and some of the things that we heard um, was there wasn't a significant amount of like evening activities as a route for families, for adults. Um, so really, and looking at that and coming together, come up, creating an outward like community program. We heard that there is capacity for, um, you know, music venue, you know, music um, concerts. Uh, we heard that that's something that, you know, the community will look for. There's something that they were very um, interested in, into like different flea markets. And as I mentioned, uh, creating a annual, like a regular maker's market and creating that into building that into a regular, uh, regular components um, within the community programming. So that piece of it could really build in a lot more foot traffic and you won't see as much as we would say retail leakage into other towns because it's a matter of bringing back um, the stakeholders and rebuilding back into your community. So the other thing we see as a medium term recommendation and priority is to establish a Southern Gateway to Main Street. Um, right now, when you arrive, it sort of comes and drips and drabs and you, um, what is most visible is um, some of those vacant buildings along Main Street. There's an opportunity at the beginning or sort of the end of the rail trail, depending on your perspective, to establish an open space um, and signifier that you've arrived into Wakefield's town center. We think that's very important. And in combination with the development on the other side of Richardson Street could be a really um, momentous way to, to enter Wakefield. Um, as we think about the sort of dual nature of these potential parcels, the other thing we want to recommend is that the city explore incentives for businesses to create that frontage um, from the back. And or we, we would call it a second front. And that might be through installing bike parking. Um, but we think that's something that they should begin to explore now. Um, and then the last is sort of dealing with the environmental uh, remediation. If there's supplemental funding, obviously, that would be very welcome. And then if we go to the next slide. Um, I'm going to be teeing up um, my uh, fellow panelist, John, um, to talk about our long-term strategy, which is really a wholesale redevelopment um, of these sites 
versus a rehabilitation. Um, so we um, are mindful that, you know, there are existing and vital businesses along that stretch, but we are, um, or we've been tasked rather with trying to imagine some possible long-term development scenarios. Um, and so you will see in a bit um, what that might look like. But, um, you know, we want to also point out that we have been talking about the eastern side of Main Street, and um, which is really the most urban of the two sides, as particularly as you move north. Um, those are all of the properties that come immediately to the property line, um, that this should be done in concert of thinking about the western side, if those are improvements to the existing buildings or uh, additional redevelopment as well. And then the last is um, we want to point out that there is a community of local businesses in Wakefield, which is really um, noteworthy. And to what extent um, the city can continue to attract and retain local businesses is going to be sort of in Wakefield's long-term uh, favor. So that I will hand the baton to John. Thank you, Corey. Uh, this is a possible redevelopment scenario. If, if we took all those assets that we've identified and we overcame the challenges, um, what could this look like? How can we really create that signature gateway uh, from the south into Wakefield Town Center? And so what you see here is a, a, a ground plan of that section of Main Street there was a typo earlier. It's not 1,600 linear feet of uh, frontage, it's 600, but that's still a big number. Uh, by redeveloping this, these eight parcels, which together total a little over 90,000 square feet, a little over two acres, we can have a significant impact on all of downtown uh, Wakefield. And so uh, the vision that we've come up with uh, aggregates these eight parcels into three development sites. And so uh, the site on the left, 450 through 472 Main Street is an aggregation of three or four parcels. Uh, the middle site, 474 through 486 is an aggregation of two parcels. And the last uh, site, 500 Main Street, not 550, um, is a single parcel. And so uh, it's a uh, feasible way to think of this, and it gets you to sizes of land areas that could be standalone projects. These could be developed in concert with one another or separate from one another. We want to take advantage of that 600 uh, linear feet of frontage. We want to uh, incentivize street front retail, local shop owners. These are shallow little retail stores, 750 square feet up to about 3,500 square feet for a, a signature food and beverage there on the, the end of Richardson and Main Street, which has an outdoor dining terrace. Corey spoke a little bit to the importance of outdoor dining for restaurateurs and how that activates a, 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 a downtown area. That can be across from the rail trail park, which is town owned land and is going to be designated as a park. It's directly across from the playing fields at Gavin Middle School. It is the kind of entry point into this portal. And so that's a real opportunity uh, that we see there, but we envision about 9,000 square feet in that first building, about 4,000 square feet of retail in the second, and about 7,500 square feet of retail uh, in the third, moving as you move north, for a total of just over 20,000 square feet of again, hopefully locally based uh, retail there that really brings the flavor to this community. Uh, as we uh, talked with stakeholders and others during our two-day engagement, we heard a lot about um, the attraction that Market Street is in Linfield. And uh, that those are largely national chains, large footprint retailers, but there is a public realm there that's inviting. And we have the opportunity here to create a similar public realm, but instead of national big footprint retailers, we can have small footprint local retailers and we can really take advantage of the authenticity of a real Main Street. Um, and then I wanna point out another thing in this, uh, this uh, diagram that's really important and 
Corey and others have talked about it, and that is the need for outdoor space, even in, in urban areas. And so you see right in the middle of our plan between the, the 472 Main Street and 474 Main Street is this green connector that essentially goes from the front door of the Americal Civic Center to make a connection to the rail trail. And that is, think of it as a, as a kind of downtown playground for uh, people of all ages. Uh, it's a place for restaurants to spill out uh, with cafes and tables. It's a place to have uh, green space, benches, uh, the, the kind of outdoor space that would attract people to come and patronize these retail stores and can be really activated for the benefit of the town and the vibrancy of the town. If you go to the next slide, uh, I should also mention as we transition to the next slide that the, slide, the site slopes um, from Main Street to the back of these buildings, it generally is a downward slope as you approach Water Street. And so there is an opportunity we think uh, to have relatively inexpensive tuck under parking here. And so each of these buildings has a big enough footprint that you can get somewhere between 50 and 70 parking spaces beneath it. So in a single kind of basement level, and most of the buildings here have basements already, uh, but it, by excavating down 10 or 12 feet, uh, we can create enough parking to meet the needs of these uh, buildings. There, we haven't mentioned it before, but there is also a lot of surface parking around this site that can be utilized in the uh, evening hours. So uh, when we look at it three-dimensionally, the first thing you might notice is that we're proposing to set these buildings back, that there should be some kind of a design guideline or a town uh, code that requires, at least along this frontage, that these buildings be set back 10 feet, because even with the new enhanced streetscape design, these sidewalks are very narrow for, for active retail. The retailers want to be able to spill out uh, onto the sidewalk with flowers or cafe tables or whatever they might be uh, selling. And so setting the buildings back 10 feet to create a kind of 20 foot zone from curb line to face of building is an important aspect. And uh, we're able to do that here without really sacrificing capacity of the site. Uh, we envision three and four story buildings, as you see. Uh, these would be allowable under your mixed use zoning overlay. They're all less than 50 feet tall, and they do have precedence uh, elsewhere in the town center. So uh, at a modicum of height, uh, three and four stories, we get a total of about 140 uh, apartments. And when we thought about the apartments, this is one of the unique opportunities that we have at this time, at this place right now, uh, we are less than 1,500 feet from a commuter rail stop. And post-pandemic, we will go back to the workplace, but very few of us will go back to the workplace five days a week. And so having an apartment with an at-home office, a work-from-home office, uh, would be a tremendous asset. And these, uh, all of these apartments are sized to include uh, work from home option uh, for the apartments. So you can live in the town center, you can patronize the restaurants, you can enjoy uh, the 18 hour a day kind of vibe of downtown. You can walk to the commuter rail to commute into Boston. You can drive your car a couple of days a week if you work out on 128 and you can work from home from a couple of days a week. So that's the kind of uh, apartments and housing that we anticipate here. As I said, it's a total of about 140 uh, uh, apartments. We would recommend one space per apartment for parking. So that's easily accommodated in that single basement level underneath these buildings. And as Corey has alluded to already, uh, the two buildings that do have frontage on the rail trail would have facades that embrace that rail trail and really treat it as an amenity. So uh, that's kind of our blue sky vision uh, for what the potential of this site would be. I'll let Diana talk a little bit about implementation. Thanks, John. 
I, I think we're here to tell you that in terms of implementation, you're not on, in this alone. There are a number of state programs that support municipalities in rethinking active downtown areas, creating transit-oriented development, and supporting urban centers. We've listed a couple of those opportunities here, and they can be supportive in some of the short and medium term projects that we talked about, as well as the long-term ones. And we'll provide more detailed links to the programs that we're referencing in the report at the conclusion of this process. And with that, I want to thank on behalf of the team, the Town of Wakefield, for inviting us to participate in this process, for all of the stakeholders who provided us with background information that helped inform our understanding of the challenges and opportunities, and open it up to a closing remarks for any of the co-chairs and then the questions from the group. I think we're ready for questions. So yeah, if you want to, um, we thought the best way to go about doing this is if you would want to direct message me in the chat box um, with any questions you might have, I, or if you have a question, um, I can call you out and you can unmute yourself. Um, but right now I don't, See any? Um, anyone? Um, so I have a question from Liz. Uh, she owns um, Sweet Bay down in, down in that area. So Liz, I'll hand it over to you. you can unmute yourself. Okay. Thanks. Everybody good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you so much for this presentation. I, being a visual person, I think seeing that all mapped out just really helps us all understand what it is that that a goal could possibly be here. Um, and I am really trying to be not not trying to be a pessimist in any way, but at the same time, I'm I have to acknowledge that a majority of the the physical opportunities here happen to be privately owned buildings. And I just am having a really hard time understanding how are we going to work around the elephant in the room? Thank you. So that, uh, I'll, I'll take a first pass at that. Um, that's often the case and uh, historically, Towns were made up of very small parcels, which in and of themselves are not really redevelopable today. Um, and so any redevelopment that has to, tends to happen is usually through an aggregation of parcels. And so uh, there are a lot of different mechanisms that one can use to, um, to achieve that. Uh, an individual landowner who may not have any expertise in development whatsoever can partner with an outside developer um, and to redevelop their property, can retain ownership in it. And what we've tried to do tonight is help everyone to realize that synergies can be gained when we work together. And so uh, there can be win 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 types of scenarios when we cooperate and when we uh, when we work with our abutters uh, to create a better future and uh, you know the ongoing businesses that are there some of them are industrial uses uh, that are not encouraged in the downtown district any longer and might be better suited to happen elsewhere uh, and so again without necessarily selling the parcel, you can still retain ownership of it. You might find a better place to relocate your primary industrial business and still uh, redevelop the site for a higher and better use, which would be uh, financially accretive to you as the owner, or you can sell. And uh, that can be a positive transaction as well, uh, because it allows someone else to come in and redevelop it or in the case where you have control of the entire parcel, uh, you can be more ambitious and redevelop the whole thing. Don, can I just jump in also? Um, and understand, Liz, I, I appreciate your question because it's really, really true because you know, all you all do live here and I get exactly where you're coming from. 
or a lot of you come back and forth. My thing is that's why we've given you two in phases. We've given you part one, part two, and part three. We want to show you in part one how we can activate your areas. We want to show you exactly what you can actually see. And you can see people coming back. If you do the first part of the thing, you can see how it becomes engaged. Then as we move on, then you go to the third phase. But that third phase is between all you as a community and stakeholders to go ahead and, and have that conversation with the town. But we just want to give, well, that's why we're here. And John did a beautiful job in presenting a beautiful package at the end, showing you what it could be. And if everybody collaborate together, which I love, but we also gave you some, um, some immediate, like, immediate actions and things that you can do. So you can always see what happens at that point. And then, you know, you all can come together again, like we have today. But I just want to let you think about that. So don't, uh, we see the end goal that could be, but let's look at the immediate goal that we've also set out for you, the tasks. Hopefully that kind of answers a little bit of the questions, Liz. Um, so this is Aaron again. I have Susan DeForest here who has a question or an idea for the area as well. Um, Susan, do if you want to unmute yourself. Hi, um, I'm Susan. Um, I am a longtime resident of uh, the community and also I've recently um, gone back to school um, for my bachelor's in interior architecture. Um, and it just so happens um, that my thesis project is on the Molise building. Um, so I was thrilled to get the email um, about tonight's meeting. And it's very exciting to see all, everybody thinking about this building I've been looking at for over a year. Um, but my one, my, my, my project is for a multi-community, I'm um, sorry, a multi-generational um, community center for senior citizens and teens um, with the opportunity to have a storefront and a gardening community and whatnot. Um, and that's just in that small building um, of the Molise uh, with, with the two and a half floors or so. Um, but anyway, that that is my thought. And I wondered what other people thought of a community center um, there. I know we have the um, uh, Boys and Girls Club across the street. And originally, I think that was temporary. So that's kind of what um, prompted my, my thought process. Um, and then bringing the seniors downtown um, and, and then just working together with the teens. Um, I saw it as a good opportunity. So I guess my question is to the group, what are, what are your thoughts on, on my project? I think, you know, I'm just going to jump in here um, and thank you for, for that comment. You know, we, we are two days into um, an immersion um, of all things Wakefield. And I think the one thing that we feel very strongly about um, that site and these sites in particular is that they should leverage very strongly their proximity to the middle school and the sort of built-in population base that you have there um, in addition to the Boys and Girls Club. So something that embraces the youth population in addition to maybe um, an older population as well, I think would be most welcome on that site. Um, you know, the sort of specifics of the users is probably not something that we're familiar enough with to get into, but um, we, we all felt very strongly that this is an opportunity um, that should be definitely taken advantage of. I just also want to quickly just jump in. Um, definitely, Susan, that's a lot of the things that we discuss, you know, like Corey says, you know, just really kind of tapping into the middle school. And we had, you know, conversations in regards to like the safety of the kids and then just having, you know, particular activities for them. So one, you know, making sure that there were crosswalks for them, but then also some things for them to do, as well as, you know, as we were talking about, you know, the um, potential rail trail, but just having that green space, like a passive green space right there for um, individuals to do. But then some of the things that we were talking about as for these buildings and rehabbing or redeveloping these, um, the, the location is mixed use space, you know, and having, you know, housing, but then also whether retail space and, you know, um, work from home space and just different things for the community. But that's where a lot of the conversation will come in. And as I mentioned, like earlier, like having, you know, maybe just surveying, you know, what is everyone looking for? Um, definitely, again, we know that, you know, a lot of the people who live there do go to other areas and try to find their activities and their retail space. But 
one things that you guys have there are, you know, opportunities for local businesses and to activate a lot of local businesses and even trying to find out what other um, business opportunities for individuals to open up spaces. And again, creating like different markets, um, you know, different retail um, avenues. So there is a lot that can be done with that particular space, but it's just really trying to find out um, what are people looking for and, you know, being able to activate those um, opportunities. And then it has been conversations in regards to uh, the Civic Center. And, you know, um, we did talk about like the Eastern side, but there are opportunities to really look at what can be done on the Western um, part of the uh, street. So that's another conversation that you really need to have um, with the town, because there's, there's so much that can be done. And it's just a matter of what are you specifically everyone's looking for. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, the only other thought I have real quick is um, I, I like the idea of the apartments, but when you drive around town and um, the traffic, not as much now with the whole pandemic, but the traffic has been increasing um, incredibly. And, and we've had a lot of um, condos and apartments go up. So that, um, that's just a thought when they mentioned that, um, you know, in the back of my head, like, oh my gosh, where are we going to put all these cars and people? Um, but anyway, that's a side note. <laughs> um, I have a question from John Urban. Thank you, Susan, very much. Um, John Urban, if you want to um, unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for this presentation. Um, really good to see uh, that underused area of town and we're thinking about it. Um, one question I had was in the short term and medium term uh, range, we put a lot of stock in the rail trail and we put a lot of stock in having stores with frontage on the rail trail, which I personally think is great once it gets built and all that. Um, but you know, what other, in the short term, you know, the rail trail is not gonna happen overnight. So, uh, you know, that's one question, but also in the long term, um, I noticed that, you know, with the, the um, renderings that we had, it seemed like there was no storefronts on the actual rail trail itself. It looked like it was abutting a parking garage. I didn't know if that was some thought to keep that in the long-term uh, project or not. Um, I can take a pass at answering your, your question. I wasn't sure if the first part was a question or just an observation that you were enthusiastic kind of about <laughs> you were enthusiastic about the rail trail as as were we um and i think you're right you know it's hard to determine the timeline so we just um part of the reason why we're recommending um you know outdoor activities is because that does relate well to that future use condition um and in particular, I think the establishment of a gateway um, through a passive open space or park or something that holds that corner at Richardson and Maine is, is a definitely a great way to sort of put a punctuation mark on, on that coming attraction. Um, you know, with regards to the future development scenario, I think you're right, most of the frontage would be on Main Street, but we've taken great care to um, at key moments. Um, between some of those developments, uh, insert a linear green space to provide access and also uh, supplemental outdoor space to some of those retail businesses that are on Main Street so that that activity and vibrancy might be allowed to migrate to um, the backside of the site where um, presumably the rail trail will be. And also on that corner at Richardson in Maine, pulling that building face back a bit to provide for additional outdoor seating or hardscaping also provides um, additional access and vibrancy to that rail trail. So um, we've had to be a little bit more strategic um, about where and how to activate it um, along the backside of the buildings, but doing so in a deliberate manner so that it's at that key um, entrance, but also aligned with the front door of the Civic Center um, and supplemental open space. Right. And also just to clarify, the parking is underneath the building. So anything at grade is going to be facing either the rail trail or some type of green space. No parking. Because the parking is underneath. Thank you. Um, Bronwyn, uh, if you want to ask your question here. 
Yes, hi, thank you very much for the uh, presentation. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, good. Um, I would like to go back to what Liz uh, uh, said, uh, and I think that her observation is at the crux of all of this, is that these are privately owned properties. Um, and until we get to the point where we have tools um, and active incentives to help these property owners or entice these property owners to do anything, nothing's going to happen. So that hasn't really been established yet. There, there was a, a bylaw uh, that would address some of the empty uh, vacant storefronts um, that was proposed two or three years ago at town meeting. Um, it was one of the first initiatives uh, that would actually do something um, as far as our vacant storefronts are concerned. And unfortunately it failed at, at town meeting. So we don't even have that in our toolbox right now. So I, I, I think, you know, um, the promise of, of revitalization and economic base via the the residents um, is fine on, on a conceptual level, but the promise of that thus far has not come to fruition in, in, in Wakefield. And I'm seeing a lot, of, I hear the, the term urban a lot. We're still, we're still a, a suburban community. And my feeling of the pulse of what most Wakefield residents want is to keep it suburban. And uh, I think with, you know, when you're talking four stories, this is really a, a, a great urbanization of, of, of the town. And I'm not sure that is the direction to go in. Uh, I'm envisioning much more green space, which has been um, uh, proposed here, but more of a, a, a village a welcoming, um, much more of a, on a personal scale rather than have, you know, four plus story buildings, which I find uh, kind of off-putting and, 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 and imposing. So um, I have a question. I know that one property owner has been involved in, um, in these discussions. Were the other property owners invited to partake? I can answer that. This is Aaron. Yes, they were. Mm -hmm. They were. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they're aware of, you know, that things are being discussed and so on and so forth. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, this is a good question too. Um, is, could there be an opportunity for state funding to be used to clean up environmental issues um, that preside, uh, preside at the old Moley's building? There's a, something called brownfield tax credits mm -hmm. that could be applied for by the property owner. Um, and they're they're quite uh, an, an attractive vehicle to um, help uh, property owners clean up their sites and and uh, get the appropriate funding, uh, depending on you know the conditions. However, we were not able to get uh, copies of the reports or or the uh, the findings uh, uh, in terms of what the conditions are on that site. Um. Next, I have uh, Councillor Chines. He had a question. I, I don't know, Councillor, you want to ask or you want me to ask? There you uh, are. No, okay. I'm ha happy to happy to ask. Thank you, Erin, and and thank you to everyone on the panel for um, you know putting in this work over the last few days and presenting the uh, the the content tonight. It's it's really exciting to hear both the the short term ideas that you have as well as some of the long terms. I uh, I, I loved seeing the idea of that that sort of linear park connecting the uh, the bike path to the Americal Civic Center. I, I did want to ask a question that that sort of touches upon uh, the points that that both Liz and, and Bronwyn raised uh, in, in terms of sort of the the separate parcels of properties there. Uh, could you give us a sense based on your experience in other cities and towns uh, how municipalities have maybe facilitated uh, the aggregation of parcels like that, and what are what are some of the, I guess, lessons learned that we can think about as a community to try to uh, to prompt some of that that work here. That's that's a, a good question, Jonathan. I'm not sure I'm the most qualified to answer that, but I will um, say that in my experience. Um, 
the parcels tend to uh, be redeveloped when there is enough density allowed on the parcel to make a commercially viable deal happen. And it is a function of the size of the parcel and the amount of development that can occur on it uh, because there are substantial costs to remediate the environmental uh, uh, problems. There are other development costs that have to be overcome. So I think uh, one of the most useful levers that a town has is to increase the zoning uh, to allow more density on the parcels. I guess maybe to ask the question another way, I mean, ha have you seen cities and towns kind of take an active role in, you know, bringing the property owners on a, a set of sites like this together to uh, to start planning through some of those ideas or, or facilitating some of those those connections between the property owners? Without citing specific examples, uh, generally when you have a type of lot consolidation, uh, between uh, private land owners, there is someone generally spearheading the process, a one resource individual that's acting as the conduit um, between those private parties. Um, you know, doing a lot of private development, it is about return on investment for a lot of land owners. So it's really about uh, the town, and we discussed this coming up with some type of incentives that would promote development and or land uh, selling of the land, right? So, and those incentives when they sell the land essentially equates to their increased uh, land value. So there's not a particular uh, formula. It is about communication. It is about someone spearheading that process, uh, which can be someone on, on behalf of, of the town. Um, to show what this value can be and what the potential can be for for those uh, site owners. So speaking of the restaurant specifically, uh, it's uh, how how can that owner be further engaged um, to help either improve their property. And I think some of it is relates to the short term approach that we have put forth, where there is uh, for little effort and not a lot of money can be some improvements and engagement done. And when I say not a lot of money, I don't mean paid for by the developers and landowners, but by for the town to help show the improvement and how you can activate that area. Baby steps, if you will. It's not a, this doesn't happen in a one, three year type of, of of uh, process, a cycle for development. I think someone on our, our panel has said is seven years, I mean, six to seven years. And it's a public private partnership. The three P's you've heard it before. That's what it is, especially when you're dealing uh, with private landowners. Yeah, I just wanna leave, I mean, Jeff brought up a very good point to you, Jonathan. It is about partnerships, it's about everyone, everyone talking and starting and that's why you that's why we're here that's why i appreciate the town of wakefield bringing you all i in and you know we're giving you a, a, we're giving you what could what is and what could be and it's about you since you're a city council is to start that conversation as well and figure out how you can make things happen and engage those landowners and talk to them about the different things and as he said the ppp you know what i mean and private public, public partnership it's the most important thing so everyone on this call, call is a stakeholder and just hopefully that, you know, we can, you guys can engage that conversation. We're just here to just give you a vision and hopefully, you know, hopefully some of you all like it. And I understand some, you know, I understand there's going to be different ways, but we're here just only to give you the steps. One, two, three. And if we start the first step, all I ask you, Jonathan, being a city council, start the first step. You do me that favor and just show everybody how active that place can be. Just on the small initiatives, watch what happens. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, I have a question from Denise. Denise, if you wanted to ask your question. Hi. Um, well, first off, thank you very much. That, like, if we could get to a, the end, it would be beautiful for the town. Um, I think that I have probably the same concern regarding traffic. 
I worked in Boston until the pandemic started and then started working from home. And every day having to come down Main Street and wait in traffic from the Walgreens all the way up through that light is abysmal. And you do anything not to have to wait there. And then there's the traffic that would go to the high school through Nahant. And so I'm just wondering if everyone who looked at it actually had a chance to see the traffic that you that that was experienced when the whole thing is opened up. Because you're you're talking about adding, if you were to add 400 apartments, probably 400 new cars, all in the garage that's probably underneath that you're saying would be additional parking. So how do you handle the traffic? Does it mean that we have to now have like an urban planning for our traffic? So Denise, uh, just to clarify this, this kind of possible redevelopment scenario envisions 140 apartments with a parking ratio of one car per apartment. And uh, of all the potential uses that can happen on a site, a residential use is one of the ones that generates the least amount of traffic. Um, and especially for people who choose to live here because they want to uh, take the commuter rail or because they want to work from home and enjoy the downtown, uh, they might be in their car even less. So uh, every incremental development brings with it new traffic, uh, but the incremental traffic that would be added here is relatively minor compared to other redevelopment scenarios. And as, as the uses move away from auto-centric uses like drive-in uh, pharmacies and things like that uh, and move to more locally based uh, retailers, uh, it, it does, those uses foster and depend upon foot traffic. Essentially what, you know, with our envisioning, um, just like John says, we're hoping that some of it will alleviate like the, the uh, vehicle traffic and go to foot traffic if we get a certain amount of retail, local retailers in there. And the hopes of, you know, there was concerns as it related to safety, especially for the kids and putting in additional crosswalk to that hope that would actually also break up the motions of, you know, the vehicles and, you know, breaking up some of the traffic there. In addition, you know, some of our suggestions was signage wayfinding that will allow people to kind of have different um, routes and avenues to kind of just not just necessarily just go straight down Main Street. Um, so those are some of like the earlier uh, recommendations to kind of help break up what is already existing, but then also kind of look futuristic and seeing, okay, as we're adding in, you know, more retail space or, you know, the hopes of uh, housing, that that will break up some of what you've, you know, the traffic concerns. And a little bit of a sidebar, um, I did, uh, when we were there, observe a lot of commercial traffic uh, which was loud and disruptive. Um, and there are options to um, not have the commercial traffic go down Main Street. Um, and also with the commercial traffic supporting the businesses, like I believe the city of Boston um, doesn't have deliveries uh, you know, during the day. I think they have in a lot of locations deliveries early in the morning. So it's a it's a it's a totally different issue, but um, I, I believe there are options to help address that, especially as Envision Wakefield uh, gets implemented uh, and the improvements in that streetscape uh, and walkability uh, occurs. Thank you. Aaron, you're on mute. Muted. I have a question from Theo. Theo, if you'd want to go ahead and ask your question. Sure. Thank you very much. Um, uh, uh, with my planning background, I'm really excited to hear you talk about um, short term wins that really build successes. And really, it is about leveraging, um, uh, I think, our community assets, really, which are 
really strong, uh, I think, civic engagement, as you, as you can see tonight. Um, it's building on the strengths of the AmeriCal, the, uh, the soccer fields, and, and the future rail trail. So that, that is, I think, really, really thoughtful. Um, um, uh, technically, I wonder, you made a couple comments about like, there's opportunities to evaluate uh, the code related both to aesthetics that might in improve uh, some streetscape or walkability, but then also you talked that there's there may be some uh, unintended conflicts within the zoning code that are like obstructing the resale of the land or reuse of uh, the building. So I wonder if you could point out some of those uh, opportunities. Thank you. So, uh, Theo. Uh, one, we took a cursory look at the mixed use overlay district and uh, a couple of things that popped out to us uh, is that it's probably not worded strongly enough uh, to really place the emphasis on uh, pedestrians. It, it uh, talks about goals, but it does not prohibit things as simple as new curb cuts off of Main Street. Uh, it does not uh, address, you know, auto-centric uses on Main Street. Uh, and uh, it contains uh, minimum lot coverage of only 20%. Uh, so uh, that would still allow, for instance, a lot of surface parking on any given parcel. Uh, which is not the highest and best use of a parcel in the central business district. So uh, when we say re-examine that, it's, it's really good as written, but it could be stronger. It could be more targeted. Does that answer your question? Um, yeah, it's, it's really useful, uh, I think, food for thought about, um, you know, you you have a vision to where you want to go, and then you do need to assess the tools that um, that get you there. And it does speak to I think some of the other comments about uh, sort of village orientation or things like that. You 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 want to be able to be sort of mindful and and thread them together. Um, I I think the comment about improving the code is, uh, to make it um, uh, more aesthetically pleasing I think is like a a short term, a, a really short term win that, that can happen, as well as the, the comment about uh, the, the empty canvas and thinking of uh, uh, South Main as a gateway into town. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, I have a question from Ryan. Ryan, did you want to ask it yourself? I don't see a last name. Uh, sure, I'll ask it. Um, does it make sense for the possibly for the town to purchase the Malice property? and get the ball rolling? Because I'm not sure we have a motivated seller. And it's just a general question and food for thought for, for people. Yeah, I think we can say that has happened. That is a question that the town is best equipped to answer. But um, on occasion, you know, it does um, warrant a sort of public purchase um, as a way to jumpstart development. Um, I don't think that we're taking a strong position one way or another here, um, but that is one potential buyer. Keep that in the back of our mind. <laughs> um, all right, well, that's what I have for questions in the chat box. Um, if anyone has any any other last questions to ask, feel free to raise your hand. Joanne or... Schooler has raised her hand. Okay, uh, go ahead, Joanne. Hi. Hi, this is Joanne. Um, great presentation. Thank you. And thanks for your hard work on this. Um, I really like the ideas uh, of the short term for the community engagement, uh, the lower cost options, the kind of cultural activities that show the synergy with the rail trail. But I did notice in the beginning that you mentioned um, the downturn in retail traffic as a result of the pandemic. So um, I was a little surprised to see the huge retail piece in the long-term goal, um, seeing that we do have Market Street so close. 
Um, but they do have good recreation activities at Market Street, like they have an outdoor ice skating rink. Uh, they do exercise classes out there. So um, I think that's all good. The other thing I wanted to mention was that um, I grew up in a community that had a great recreation center. And it was a huge hub for the whole community with an ice rink and a pool. And I think that's something that seems to be missing in Wakefield. I'm sure people have thought of this, but, um, and I'm not sure this is the place for it, but um, it's something to think about. And you mentioned the tie-in with the youth at the Galvin. And I think that is um, an important thing to consider in the planning. Joanne, I want to say thank you very much for bringing that up and talking about that. Ironically, the thing is, is that we understand that Linfield is right in your back, back door, but we realize that if we create something for your neighborhood or give you an idea, we can bring the actual money back into Wakefield and we can create that old, that old town feeling like a suburban place again where, where you grew up in, you can remember and have memories as a long lasting memories when you get older. Thing about it is you got to remember these kids who are in the Galvin, they run over to Linfield. They don't remember Linfield. We want them to remember Wakefield. We want them to remember permanent residents of Wakefield. So in turn, they continue to contribute to, to the economy and continue to go ahead and pay the taxes and do everything else. So you're 100% right in what you're saying. Um, so you're right. Linfield is there, but Wakefield is why we came up with this plan and doing the short-term goal. I'm glad you recognized our short-term goal is one of the things to show how we can activate it. So hopefully that kind of answered that for a little bit to you, for you. And, and Joanne, I'll just um, jump in as well. You, you were commenting on the amount of retail, which I agree is aspirational, um, but we do see this being a great location for retail, um, given, as we've already mentioned, the location of the Civic Center, the middle school, and some additional retail amenities. I know Liz spoke earlier, um, but what Sweet Bay is doing, um, I think, represents the type of local business um, that can really thrive in Wakefield's Main Street. Um, that said, um, when we are showing active frontage, it doesn't necessarily have to be retail. So um, my colleagues and I often talk about what we call non-retail ground floor active uses, um, which can be youth oriented, fitness, um, creative office space, uh, fitness, uh, there's a whole host of things that might occupy that storefront that don't fall into a traditional retail category. So just to add um, an additional layer of information to sort of how we think about potential ground floor space and activation. Plus, we were also speaking of local retail yeah. uh, businesses as opposed to big box national chains that are driven by revenue, right? Um, so I think that's a component there, too. And Jeff just jumped in exactly what I was just about to say, um, because, you know, yes, we heard the conversation about Linfield, but when you look at it, you know, that is definitely like big box retailers. And we're looking, you know, if we're talking about retail, it's about really showcasing those local small businesses um, and giving them an opportunity. That's why, you know, we definitely emphasize whether the that, you know, storefront space or again, you know, we've talked about like the Maker's Mark or the flea market and, you know, just those community feel um, and given those businesses and, you know, those opportunities. Um, so that's, that was more like the thought process there. So I think we have time for two more questions. I do have one, um, Benny, if you want to go ahead and ask your question. Hi, thank you. Uh, I had a question. I don't know that much about you know, the planning process. And so one thing that's been like rolling over in my mind as you were describing this, and you mentioned it at the very beginning is, so there's um, prospective development of this bank right at the corner of Richardson. And so as the town is thinking forwards to this, what you described as a seven year development cycle, how does the town evaluate proposals for development that like may or may not fit into this grand scheme. Like there's a proposal right now on the table in front of us that like doesn't sound to me like it really fits this description. Like a bank does not say like fun, interactive community space to me. And so 
I don't know, like, but it would be an actual active use on what is now kind of an abandoned site. So like, how do you weigh those and what, you know, some, there's a question somewhere in there. <laughs> I don't know. You guys want to add anything to that that you've seen in other properties? Um, if anyone, and I can chime in too. Anyone? No. I mean, I think Benny, from a town perspective, um, you know, what they're giving us is really, you know, um, something to shoot for, but I don't think this is what, at the end of the day, what, you know, what the plan will be, right? It's giving us good ideas of what the potential of this property could be. Like you were just alluding to, the bank is an active um, space, but I think as we see kind of these new projects coming through, um, whether that be these retail components with the mixed use, um, I think we just have to keep in the back of our mind what the potential is for this, for this area. And, and when we meet with, you know, people that are potentially looking to purchase or people that want to sell their property there, um, kind of have this as like a tool and in, in the back of our mind. So I don't know anybody wanted to add to that. All right. Well, I think that's all we have for questions, unless anyone's raised their hand and I haven't seen. Um, I think that's it. I don't know if you want me to turn it over back to you, Ed. Um, you know, again, I want to thank you guys for everything that you've done for us. Um, this report, uh, it's exciting. Uh, the short term, short term goals, the whole idea of placemaking, getting people outside, I think is really exciting and, and feasible. Um, so I, I want to thank you guys for all taking the time out of your busy schedule to come to Wakefield and, and spend the time with us tonight as well. Oh. Yeah, and and we and we're uh, thankful to be uh, have participated as volunteers, and and uh, it's uh, uh, we we love doing this. So, um, and and just a reminder: in, in about twelve weeks' time, uh, we'll we'll have a report that'll be um, you know a little more uh, comprehensive than our uh, summary presentation. So, look forward to comments on that as well. And we'll make sure that we get that on our website and um, can share it, you know, on our Facebook page, so uh, we can make sure we get gets to the right people. So, right. Uh, well, thank you, everyone. Um, if you have any other questions after this presentation, please feel free to reach out to myself, um, Aaron Kokinda at ekokinda at .us. Um, And yeah, so thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very thank much. You, everybody. Thank, thank you. you, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Eli.